Okay, good morning everyone. I am Vijay Anthony from the Health Science at Brindabella Christian College. I am here to demonstrate as part of your assignment, an assignment for my year 12 chemistry students about determining the mass of copper in brass. So it's a, so it's a redox titration that we are trying to demonstrate here. My students will, will not, were supposed to be doing this in, as part of their investigative track. However, since in the current COVID-19 scenario that we have, you are, you are unfortunately not going to be able to do it. So, I'll demonstrate it for you. For doing this determination, you have higher sulfate. And you're going to use potassium iodide as the primary standard used to standardize that higher sulfate. Now, so to, before you start all that, as you know, we are still trying to determine copper in brass. So we've taken the, around two grams of brass nails and this brass nails, it, it contains copper. Now this copper, we can't find out how much of copper is there in this. We need to take it out into solution if you need to do a titration. So to do that, we react it with an oxidizing agent like nitric acid. As you know, nitric acid is a powerful oxidizing agent. It's very harmful for an inhalation is going to cause severe breathing problems. We added 20 ml of concentrated nitric acid to the brass nails. This was just so that we can get that copper inside the nails into solution. Because if you don't have it in solution, you're not going to be able to determine it. And if you don't determine how much copper ions are there, we can't find out how much, what is the percentage of copper in brass. So let's move on. And as you know, the titrant that we're using is sodium thiosulfate. This thiosulfate has to be standardized. To do that, we are using potassium iodide as our primary standard. So we've got our potassium iodide ready to go, a one molar solution. We've, we need to do this in acidic medium, so we have got one molar sodium sulfuric acid. We need an oxidizing agent, which is your hydrogen peroxide. The method would suggest you add three mils of the uh, potassium iodide, three mils of the acid, and uh, they would say a few drops of uh, peroxide. Why I do those things, I need you to tell me in your report. As you know, while you're doing your quantitative analysis, you need to make sure that all your equipment are clean and they have to be rinsed with the solution that you're taking. So we're starting off with potassium iodide. I need a quantitative amount of it, hence I'm using the pipette. To So, now we have taken two lots of, two alcohols of potassium iodide. This potassium iodide is a one molar solution. 
now we need to add exactly the same amount of sulfuric acid again we follow the same procedure remember the sulfuric acid provides that acidic medium that helps in this redox reaction to proceed once that's done the reaction hasn't begun the reaction will not begin till you add your peroxide to it now this is a six percent peroxide the method suggests about a few drops of it and I will add only in one because what is happening here is iodine or the potassium iodide is undergoing redox reaction there so it's starting at zero so that's your initial burette reading you record it in your book once that's done then you begin your titration so we are looking for we are looking for a pale yellow color so all the iodine that is being released is going to react with the thiosulfate and since we already know the concentration of potassium iodide that gives us the concentration of iodine and if we know the concentration of iodine or the number of moles of iodine then from that we can actually deduce the number of moles of sodium disulfate and that's how we standardize sodium disulfate the reason that i have used a mask is because not just because of COVID-19 it's also because of the iodine that is being released we don't want too much inhalation of the same thing we need a pale yellow color before we add the starch might be a good time for me to actually start adding some distilled water to ensure that all the droplets of thiosulfate that might be sticking to the sides are going in. I think I'm feeling fairly confident the end point is closed so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my starch solution. So I'm going to add 2 ml of the starch solution. Yep. You can see that violet color. Your end point is when that turns into pale white. Okay, we got our end point there. So that just means that give you the title value of what? It's thirty-eight point six mils. Let's just write that here so we have a as you can see, it's taking around 38.6 mils. I'll have to refill my thiosulfate if I need to do the next titration. So again, the burette routing is beginning at zero. And now we need to prepare our second batch. We already know that it's going to be around 38 mils, so we'll just take care of that. So you can see that's our potassium iodine with sulfuric acid. Now we are going to add our 1 mil of hydrogen peroxide to it. And there we go, the reaction has begun. And we need to start this again. This time we have some, we have a rough idea where the title value is going to be. So we'll just let it loose for the first 30 mils or so. Mm, that is not expected. It's only 26 mils and it's already 
And so let's just add the starch now and see if that's going to help. This is the beauty of parametric titration. Just doesn't want to. So we got our beautiful starch solving everything. Let's see where this goes. And that is my end point. So, what is our title reading now? I'm going to say it is 32.0. Obviously, we haven't got it within a mill, so we have to redo this. So we're starting at zero. Being very mindful that this iron being released here. yellow color so we add our stock solution to it now I'm adding the exact same amount of your stock solution again so it's around two mils that's a method is suggesting Out the excess. Make sure I rinse the tip of the burette as well, and then we start. Shouldn't be too long. It's just that something more oxidizing is just getting into it. So that comes to 29.1 mil, 29.1 mil. So that's uh, because we had to change the solution, we had to redo both experiments. Now we need to do the second one. That's about there. Yes, and that's our end point. And that comes to around. Alright, so now we need to transfer the copper solution from here into our standard flask, make it up to volume. So we have captured all the copper that is there in that nails. And this has to be done quantitatively. Quantitatively in the sense that every little drop of this has to go into our standard flask. To do that, we carefully transfer it. Quantitative transfer means we continue to wash the beaker with little amounts of water. This is just so that I get everything out, every little speck out. We don't need to lose even a drop. Because that drop, if we think of it in percentage level, is going to account for a huge loss. The next part is making it up to volume, making it up to the, the mark that is given over there. You can just allow it to go as quickly as you want. And yes, got it. I've got it to the mince list. Now we're just going to make sure that it's well mixed. 
all of the bra all of the copper in the brass nail has been dissolved quantitatively transferred now what we have to do is take out 25 ml of this solution into two conical flasks because we need to do any analysis in duplicates and then do a little magic on it and then titrate we have added 25 ml of copper, copper solution into our conical flask now what we need to do is because it's too acidic we have added concentrated nitric acid to it even though we have diluted it now by making it up to 250 ml it is still a bit too acidic so we need to bring the ph up slightly so to do that we use sodium carbonate a molar solution of sodium carbonate that's the method's suggestion and we'll do it drop wise till we find a precipitate of the carbonate coming out So we take our sodium carbonate, we are going to see, as we add, we can see some precipitate formation, but we need that precipitate to stay for some time. It has become cloudy and it's, if I add a bit more, I can see that it still stays, it is not dissolving. So this tells me nitric acid has been almost neutralized. Now what we do is we just need to add a few drops of our acid so that it's slightly acidic. The turbidity is gone and now the solution is slightly acidic. Add your 10 ml of potassium iodide. So let's start our titration again. Again we have point around a 0.1 molar solution of high sulfate with us we are going to titrate it against the iron that is being released and we'll see how we go I'm going to add our starch now Be a drop, nearly there, and we are there, and we are there. So now this is not standardization of sulfate anymore. It is determination of copper in brass. the The main aim of this titration would be finding out concentration of the copper ions in solution. So this is the question for you. And let's start this again. So you average it out and take it. So hope that's useful and hope you do a good job on your report. Thank you guys. Thank you.